Morning, I'm John Thiel, and today I'm Fish Head. I'm kind of racing the storm. They say it's gonna rain this afternoon, so wanted to get out here this morning and see what we can do real quick. You can, you can see that the light is at its lowest point that you're gonna get during daytime fishing. It is dark out here, and we're out trolling some pretty deep water, so we're gonna to have to make some adjustments today to help fish see these lures and, and make sure we're fishing lures that they can, they can find and chase down. We'll talk a little bit about that as the day goes on because it's a lot different than a flat sunny day. Stay right where you're at. Fish Head's coming up. That one had the rod buckled like he was a pretty decent fish. Feels like it. Feels like he might be a good start. Man, there's nothing easy about what we're doing today. Got no help when it comes to light. As far as light penetration and helping fish see lures. Hard to keep a lure running steady when you look at the waves we're dealing with. And these are the kind of days that Man, I'll tell you what, what you pick to use for a lure can make or break your day. We got an east wind, it's gonna storm this afternoon. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They, uh, they're calling for it at about 100% this afternoon. Got a feeling they're gonna be right. You can just tell, I mean, with this low cloud cover, this low ceiling we got. But what that does, makes it really, really tough for fish to see these lures especially when you're fishing the stained water like we are today. Now sometimes it'll turn a bite on, especially in clear water. All of a sudden the system will get moving, but when you're in stained water, a lot of times when you get these dark days, it can be kind of tough. They just don't see as well. We're here at 20 feet to go. We're pretty close. Feels like a decent eater size fish to start. Oh yeah, good eater size walleye. Get him in here. And I'll explain to you a little bit about how we're gonna combat some of this stuff today to catch some fish, and that's a great eye to start. That's a perfect size walleye. Perfect dinner fish. One of the things I do though, right away, when I'm faced with this scenario, is I try to pick lures that are gonna grab a fish's attention. That walleye right there, this lure is gonna grab his attention. That's a great eater sized fish, 16 inch eye. We'll let him go today, but I'm gonna pick lures that grab their attention with action, okay? So normally, you know, I'm, I'm pulling lead core right now. Most of the time, what I'd be doing right now is pulling more of a stick style bait, a shallow diving bait. But that's not what I'm doing today. What I'm doing today is I'm pulling a diver. I'm pulling a deeper diving lure, and I'm gonna show you the lure that it is here that I'm using, let me let me see if I can get it out of the net. This is a, a Bomber 24A. A little bit smaller profile, but than a, than a big stick bait. But let me tell you something about this lure that will make it really work on a day when you gotta grab walleye's attention. Because it's a deep diving lure, this, this lure will actually dive to 20 feet on its own if I'm pulling it on mono. This lure's got a lot wider action. It's gonna be a lot more like that. Okay, and what it's gonna do is make it so that these walleyes can tune in on it from a little further away. Because remember, they're just not gonna be able to see as well. They're gonna have to tune in from a little further away. And they're gonna have to be able to sense that something's near, get closer to it before they can see it. So that's why I'm using a deep diver here. It's something that's a lot wider. And I know a lot of times, people don't think about using deep divers on lead core because they think, well, the idea behind lead core is just to get a shallow diving lure down. But that's not the case. Really what I'm trying to do is get any different lure down there, but I'm putting a different action down there by going to this deep diver. I'm putting that big wide wobble on there, and then you add to it the fact that this lure's got rattles. So every time that thing does that big wide wobble, what happens is it gives them walleyes a chance to tune in, get close enough to be able to see it and hit it. That's why I'm using a lure like this one right here. It could be any lure that's a deep diver today. You just want something that's big and wide, and I think this 24A bomber is just phenomenal. Get this thing back in the water and see if we can find us another one. 
One thing that's different right off the get-go when you're pulling a deep diving lure is even with lead core, now all of a sudden you gotta adjust a little bit more. That five feet of depth for every 30 feet or one color of lead core doesn't necessarily work identical anymore. If I was pulling a stick bait, I might be at 240, 245 in length out on the on the rod on the line counter right now on the reel, but I'm not. What I'm doing is I'm running this one at about 230. And the reason I'm doing that is when I first set this morning, I was at that 240, 250 mark, and what was happening was I was picking up mud. And that's because I got that deeper diving bill. So you gotta make those adjustments. So when you first get out, one of the things you wanna do is really work to just figure out that right amount of line out. And, and a lot of times that's as simple as just the, you know trial and error. I dropped it down thinking about where I thought it should be, but I was wrong. I mean, it picked up mud. So then I moved it another 10 feet. I took 10 feet back. I went from 245 to 235. Got just a little bit of mud again when I was slowed down. So I knew I was really, really close. So I found the 230s a number and boom, that fish hits right there. There's one right there. Ooh. Feels like a decent fish. But the boat get turned a little bit here and we're in these surges pretty, pretty heavy. Let's see if I can just turn us back a little bit. Well, huh. hard to tell. You know, you're going two miles an hour and then the boat lifts up on every wave and gets up, up even quicker. Yeah, it feels like a decent fish. Well, I think one of the things that can make a big difference on days like today too is speed. Because one of the things about speed is it helps you, helps you trigger fish. A lot of times I feel like if I can go a little bit faster, it triggers more of those active fish to jump and hit. You take a day where they can't see it real well, if they feel it ripping by them, if they, you know, catch a glimpse of it ripping by them, I think it can really help you to be flying. What I've been trying to do today is just park this boat somewhere in that 2.3 to 2.6. It's one nice thing about these big long rods I'm using. I'm using, the, these are nine and a half foot rods, but you can see how soft it is on the tip. And it allows me to let that fish, when he gets to the boat here and gets a little worked up, I can actually go with him with the tip. It allows me to keep the drag a little bit tighter on the fish. And yet, oh boy, this is a giant. Holy smokes. Here I was thinking all along I had an okay fish. Wait till you see this fish I'm about to hoist in here. This thing's a giant. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> that is an all day long giant. Holy smokes, this fish is huge. He is huge, fat, and long. What a fish, holy smokes, got himself unhooked. Look at this, look at this, come on. Come on, big girl, we'll get you out of there. Look at this walleye. Wow, look at that fish. That is a giant walleye. No matter where you go, that is just huge. But that fish, I'll tell you what, that fish triggered on color. That fish triggered on action. The fish triggered on speed on a day when man, she couldn't see real well, but she found a way to see that lure. Look at how fat and thick that walleye is. That's a giant. Let's get this girl back in the water. That's awesome. What a fish. There she goes. Whew. What a fish. Man, that was an awesome fish. That's one of the biggest walleyes I've gotten in a long time. It just goes to show you what you can do pulling cranks. Pulling cranks even on a day like today, man. That is awesome. Ooh, there's one right there. Ooh, that feels like a better fish. Oh, this is just a case of making sure you make some adjustments when you got a day like today. But I think one of the biggest adjustments you can make trolling is adjusting to the sky. You know, what's that ceiling like? 
But getting that right action down there, you know, something bigger, something that catches their attention when they can't see as well. Getting those bright colors down there, you know, putting something down there that when they do get in the neighborhood, they can see so that they can attack it. That makes a huge difference. And the other thing, you know, you look at these lures I'm running today, these 24A bombers, rattles. You know, having something they can, they can hear. You know, I don't really know if fish hear, but they've got that lateral line that picks up vibration and with noise, you know, whether it's the vibration that they're picking up or whether it's the, the actual noise, maybe they do hear, I don't know. But I do know that rattles, I think, make a heck of a lot more difference in scenarios like we're in right now when they can't see as well. There he is, big walleye. Big walleye, oh, come on. Stay on there. Got him. Nice fish. Not a giant, but heck of a nice fish. Look at that. What a way to wrap up a day, or a morning, quite frankly, because like I said in the beginning, we're racing weather. We wanted to get out and get some fish caught. Look at that. And that walleye right there, He's still biting. You just gotta make sure that fish can see it. You just gotta make sure that fish can hear it. Make sure that fish can tune in on it. And you know what? They'll eat. That's an awesome way to wrap it up. There he goes. <laughs>